everyone! So today I want to continue the series that we started with the <clears throat> um, brand new two color sets. Now, first of all, thank you so much to all of you who placed the orders so quickly. I totally did not expect them to sell out overnight. Based on the numbers uh, from previous uh, clear stamps, um, that I have been selling on Etsy, I estimated a rough kind of, you know, equation of how many days the stock would last. And I thought uh, the stock would be lasting from a week to two weeks and that would be quite realistic. But when they sold out within um, less than 24 hours, I was amazed, quite literally amazed. Um, so thank you so much. So there will be a restock in the very beginning of October. They are currently being manufactured, so there will be more. And um, along with uh, restocking the color theory, I'm also restocking the FOTD, which has been requested so many times. And I thought I will restock both of them together. And now those of you who haven't been able to get FOTD, you can also get that as well. And there is also still some moving doll, doll available, so I'm not restocking that for now. Um, but basically all of the three work really well together. You can use all of the eye, the brows and the lips uh, and the lashes and even the bun on this face, absolutely fine. Um, so you can kind of merge them together. Even if you wanted, you could try and use this face and that would be a longer body because it's slightly longer, as you can see, it's a different shape of a face. Uh, but it all works really well together. The proportions are different because it's wider. So if you can see that, so these eyes, um, if you wanted to cut them in half, um, you could place them further away and create a different look. But anyways, this is just to let you know. I will do soon an update on the restock because um, I was planning to add a couple more things. Like this round uh, acrylic block has been also sold out. But I have a bunch that were um, slightly damaged during the manufacturing process and they're fine for usage it's just the visual aspect of it so they're a tiny little um, when they were lasered it wasn't sort of lasered in a pristine way and so I'm going to be selling them heavily discounted so okay so today uh, just to revisit what we've done here we played, I tried to link up this video up here for you if you haven't seen it. Um, so we played with the color wheel and we tried to mix colors and think a little bit out of the box, or shall I say out of the circle, and think about your primary colors being as not the typical or the traditional yellow, red and blue, but in this instance I have swapped the blue for something else, which is a neutral color. So you can totally do that and you can put whatever color whichever way you want and see what you can get in between. Then what I have done here is I pulled out colors that I liked from the secondaries and then kind of just um, spread out the varieties and here I have two color palettes. So we have a skin tone palette and here we have kind of blush and lip um, palette. So that I will take to today's tutorial and what we will do is I thought because this was fairly, um, you know, straightforward with the color theory um, I will give you some more ideas of how to use this set, but I think uh, the moving doll is the one that needs um, a lot more tutorials just to get you going and inspire you for the projects or the illustrations you can create. So in today's tutorial I will simply show you how to create the face. So we're going to stamp it out, we're going to line it out and um, again, the way I stamp is I use these as a starting point. 
I stamp it in a light color, in a nude color. Then I line it over to make it look like an um, illustration, not just a stamped image. But if you prefer to go straight with um, an archival ink, an ink that is waterproof, and stamp out the images, then you can totally do it and skip the extra step that I like doing. Then I will show you how to use these two colors um, for creating skin tones and blushes and how sort of work around it and that will be it for today so we're basically going to do this part and if I have time I might squeeze in some final kind of decorating aspects of it as well and then I am thinking there are going to be at least two more episodes of this series so next time I would be showing you how to create different poses how to build them um, and then the final one probably will be decorating in the sense of dressing her up, um, creating little outfits, going from something quite simple, um, like a 50s swimsuit, uh, to a maybe a little dress or something like that. Mm. So we will be working on that. So let's start on the face today. I'm going to use the face stamp, uh, the lip and the eyes. Okay, for the ink, I will use this one, Tim Holtz Distress Ink Tattered Rose. So the way I like using it is I take my stamp to the ink pad rather than the other way around. And then I'm just going to stamp her face, keeping in mind I might want to add some fancy or cute hair buns and so I would need some space up here. So that's the face. You can see the line is nice and thin. I really wanted the line to be as thin as possible. So I'm going to start with one eye. And actually, typically I always start with the lips. So I'm not sure why I told you to start with the eyes. So here we go. I'm going to use my second um, smaller acrylic block. These are still available on my Etsy. Um, so I always start with the lips. I'm going to put them in the middle this time. And then for the eye, um, you can now play with the eyes. You can make them more sassy, which is what I'm planning to do. So all of my eyes previously, they are at a straight line, but if you wanted to cut them in the middle, you can then uh, stamp them independently, which means you can create a gap between the eyes larger, and you can also tilt them up and down, which creates a different look. That's why for this face, I designed them to be separate, two separate stamps rather than on one strip. Some of you might find it more fiddly, but those of you who are a little bit seasoned and experienced, you actually will like that um, freedom. So you can see they're a bit wonky. I'm fine with it, nothing wrong. It sort of adds to the style. And for this part, actually I didn't line out anything in here, so I will leave it like that and let's jump to the watercolor part of it and then we will conclude with all the finishing touches. So for the skin we had Turner's Yellow by Schminke.
and we had Burn Sienna by Rembrandt. Don't need much of it at all. We're working on a very small area. So to keep your stems nice and clean and long lasting, I would recommend placing them back as soon as you're done with them. That way they won't pick up any excess dust and they will stick nicely to your acrylic blocks rather than fall off. So when they fall off and don't stick anymore that usually means they have been around the block <laughs> quite literally um, and they just need a little bit of cleaning and all the instructions are at the back. Now this bit can be as creative as you wish. You could pull out your um, watercolor pencils, you could pull out your gouache paints, you could do um, acrylic paint pens or um, you could do even um, nail color too, so the um, water soluble um, crayons. Today I'm going to show you how I work with watercolor. So the key here is for the first layer is to have it as watery as possible. We're not aiming here for a dimension just yet. That will be our second layer. So we will be glazing. If you find that there is a little bit too much paint sitting here, just pull it out. Make sure it doesn't dry on the spot. And that way you can just carry on like that. So now you can see in some areas there's more watercolor than in the others. Now use your brush to guide those bits of water. So where would you like them to be? For me, I'd like them to be more up here. So I'm just going to pull them up into the areas where I'd like more shading or shadowing. Now the granulation from Burn Sienna is starting to do its job and personally I quite like that. So Turner's yellow is a very opaque color so keep that in mind. If you want it to, to be nice and transparent don't use much of it or use more water to dilute it. Now I'm adding a little bit more of the Burn Sienna and I'm starting to dab it in those areas where I would like more darkness. So treat this as like an eyeshadow area. A little bit where the nose is and under the eye. Now if your watercolor is super super wet it will just kind of you know have a quick migration. Uh, so make sure it's not too wet. Ears as well and then side of the forehead here generally you always get a bit more shadowing and I think that's quite good so I'm going to leave it at that and now I'm going to squeeze tiny little bit of the transparent red deep it's a super super bright color so we literally need the tiniest amount of it and as it is, like that, I'm just going to dab it in and see if I like it. If it's too much, 
what I may do is go back to the color that I already had here and actually mix it in a bit so that that way it's not as strong if you find it's still a little bit too strong I'll show you what you can do you can with a clean brush just add more water like this and if you wanted to lift it a bit you can do that so for instance here it traveled all the way up into the ear so if I didn't want that I'm going to lift it and then again with the mixed color here on the side now it's a much more gentler mix so I'm going to dub it in and most likely it's going to spread a little bit more and create even a lighter look so I'll bring it up to you as it is looking right now and then you'll see what it looks like in a minute so bits around the eyes here have mostly dried up and this is a good time now to be adding more color if you wanted to so I'm going to go straight into burnt sienna and just use burnt sienna like so tiny bit here just have fun mixing you can create more texture as the watercolor starts drying think about your highlights leave them untouched so this is where you want the lightest colors now it would be a good time to pull out your hair dryer or your drying tool and set the colors so that they stop moving into one another which is what I'm going to do now so there's a bit of a puddle here I'm going to just remove some of it there's really no need for that much water color there we go like so so I will show you now what we got and what we got is something very pretty in my opinion because we have some lovely texture where the burnt sienna went we have some lovely kind of watercolor blossoming around here and you can see now the pink is very very gentle and very very pretty very light um, there's one spot here on the chin which looks like I forgot to add color so I mean you could leave that to correct with your pencils and things or you could just pull out the watercolor and blend it together like so so that it's more seamless I'm going to set it again okay so there we go um, so that's that at this point we can then think about decorating and adding hair eye makeup and all of the good stuff so let's do that now so at this point it would be useful to talk about color palette now you don't have to you can just go with it and sort of freely create the color palette that you wish but at the minute I thought of trying out something different on the eyes which um so the indanthron blue is the pencil I added recently um, it's a dark blue and when you blend the that's not that's buff titanium no when you blend the pink white uh, it pulls out this like electric blue so I thought I'll use that on the eyes to dye and that would be quite pretty now when you think about colors what pops um, next to it let me just grab my color wheel so when you think about the color theory we have blue and on the opposite we have orange 
So it's the complementary color, which means that if you mix them together, you get most likely neutralized kind of muddier color. It could be a pretty one, it could be a not so pretty one. Um, so if you wanted to ever neutralize one of the colors, that's what you need to add. However, if you want the colors to pop, what you do need to add is the color that is opposite it. So to be next to it, not with it. So if we added a bit of orange, that would make both colors blend. So I'm thinking, okay, blue will go on the eye, and then the orange will go on the lip. And then somewhere close to it um, is this blue-green sitting there, so like a teal color, like a turquoise color. And that would look so lovely with the orange. Um, so I'm thinking, if I wanted to, I could create some of these teal colored accessories. But that's sort of, you know, planning quite ahead, which you don't have to do by any means. But do pull out a few colors that you think you might be using. So that's what I'm going to do now. Go through my art supplies, pick the colors and come back. <laughs> 